Hello everyone, greetings and welcome and a very happy, peaceful and blessed Christmas to all of you. So let us pray together. Who are we, Lord, ordinary people, to be called as witnesses to the great birth? We are the people you have called and we approach you in joy and humility, in gratitude and hope, glad to honour what is most important today, that all life is to be honoured and peace is to be sought. Amen. So I pray and hope that today, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, will be a time of joy. Whatever you are doing, know that God is with you, because God has come as a baby wrapped in a cloth, lying in a manger. So let us come, and let us worship God together. And we continue in worship as we light our Advent candles. We light four candles. In the darkness a light will shine for evermore. Here is one candle to remind us of the prophets. The second for John the Baptist. The third for Mary. And the fourth for us. And now the central candle for Jesus, born today. Jesus is the light of the world. Mary gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. Loving God, we thank you for the birth of Jesus Christ our Saviour. May we always welcome him into our community our homes, our lives. Today we celebrate his birth with great joy. Amen. So now we sing together that wonderful carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing.
And now Wendy is going to lead us in our opening prayers of praise and confession. Dear God, we come to offer our prayers to you on this very special day. A day when we exchange gifts and celebrate the best gift that mankind has ever received. The gift of your Son, Jesus, our Saviour. We pour out our thanks and praise for the gift of salvation, that you sent your Son to give his life, taking the burden of our sin onto himself. As we get caught up in the excitement of the day, may we not lose sight of the baby born in a stable. And as we light our candles, that Jesus came to be the light of the world. And yet we confess that we turn away from the light. We stumble around in the darkness thinking we can find the way by ourselves. Just as we begin to think that we are lost, we turn a corner and there is the light, burning brightly. As once again we walk towards the light, enter the stable, kneel at your feet, and repent our foolishness, we are welcomed in with love and forgiveness. Hallelujah. All thanks and praise to God. Amen. Today is a time to wake up. It is a time to celebrate, for Jesus is born. We recognise that today on this Christmas morning, and we celebrate in song, with that song, Earth Lies Spellbound.
And now Catherine and Graham are going to bring to us some very familiar but very meaningful words from the Bible. The reading is from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For, as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God for his word. This reading is taken from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, on whom his favour rests. Amen. A gospel reading reminds us of the shepherds, lowly, seemingly unimportant, but of crucial importance to us today, while shepherds watched their flocks by night.
it is an understatement if I was to say to you, what a year it's been. And a year it certainly has been, hasn't it? The year began to a large extent full of promise and hope, full of possibilities and opportunities. And this is what usually happens at the start of a new year, the start of each year. One year draws to a close, another year begins. And I remember it as if it was yesterday almost, the end of 2019 and moving into the year 2020. A new year began. We took down our Christmas decorations very early in January. We stopped singing our Christmas carols and we turned to 2020, making our New Year resolutions perhaps, our promises to one another, our covenant with God and our commitment to make this New Year a good one. And then it happened. And we all know what that was. And it changed everything. It changed the way that we related to the world, the way that we behaved towards one another and to ourselves. It changed our working life, our home life and indeed our worship life. And I guess the year uh, divided itself pretty much into two parts. There was that period of time pre-March 2020 and then post-March 2020. And we thought to ourselves, oh it'll be fine, we'll all be back to normal at Easter, many of us thought, worshipping in our churches, going about our daily business, life pretty much back to normal, with all those restrictions, remember those, way behind us? A distant memory. So we thought. But we know, of course, that life has not quite turned out to be like that. But I think we also have to admit that the experiences that we have gone through have thrown up all sorts of new opportunities, all sorts of new creativity and in fact ways of being the church. Never mind ways of living life in general. I guess much of this has been thrust upon us. We haven't had much choice in it I suppose. None of us wants to be arrested for breaking social distancing rules, after all. None of us wants to be disrespected for doing the wrong thing. And while all this goes on, there is still hope. We hold on to hope. And that hope may feel very much to be a sort of flickering candle in the darkness, rather than a powerful torch lighting up the night. But still it is a hope, even a vague, very fragile hope, that 2021 will be different, that 2021 will be a little bit better. And this is partly why I find the story in Luke's Gospel very helpful and comforting and encouraging. In Matthew's Gospel we have of course the angelic angels, the messengers, we have wise men, we have Herod, the chief priests, the scribes, yes scary Herod, remember him? John, the Gospel writer, gives us this wonderful theological reflection on the Word of God coming into the world, the Word made flesh, full of grace and truth. Luke gives us, what does Luke give us? 
Luke gives us shepherds. It's a pretty basic and bold account of the birth of Jesus. But then this fascinating account of the shepherds, nameless shepherds, tending their flock. That's no great surprise, I guess. It's what shepherds often did, looking after their sheep. And you can't, as you're thinking about the shepherds, you can't help but look back to the Old Testament and to that great shepherd extraordinaire, David himself. But then fast forward again to the present, or should I say 2,000 years ago, to the shepherds tending their flock. Ordinary shepherds doing their everyday ordinary routine, their everyday activity. And then suddenly the angelic messenger and the plainness, the ordinariness of this scene is punctuated by this explosion of light and presence and good news. And no, it's not the full moon lighting up the sky, but it's the very presence of divine glory. Divine glory. Let's even forget that posh phrase. Let's get down to the basics. God. It is God. Through and through. God breaking through into the ordinariness of the shepherd's existence, disrupting their lives and sending them on a journey where they would never ever be the same again. What really gives me encouragement is that the good news that was proclaimed wasn't just for the shepherds, nor just for the Israelites, nor for any other small group of people. It was good news for everyone. Great joy, as we read. Great joy for all people. Remember that. Emphasise that phrase. All people. For everyone. That's what I need to hear today. Because in very simple but profound terms, it tells me that the birth of Jesus changed the whole world. It was good news for all the world. The shepherds were changed. The expectations of the Jewish people are fulfilled. And the whole world is transformed. And Luke was also at pains to point out that God's love, God's grace, God's presence was a down-to-earth reality. It wasn't just some pie-in-the-sky notion, nor a sort of vague hope, but a present reality. We see it. We see it throughout Luke's Gospel. Because for Luke, Jesus was involved in the everyday of people's lives, in their reality, their down-to-earth existence. Luke had a clear purpose, and that purpose was to demonstrate clearly that Jesus cared about the poor, the deprived, the outcast, all the people. And you can read all about it in Luke's Gospel. You could read the whole of the Gospel, and there we see an overarching theme of Jesus deeply concerned for all people. And in that, we glimpse the eternal truth that God is here with us, down to earth, concerned, involved, part of our lives. And I really need to hear that. I need to feel it in my bones. 
I need to know it deep inside me, that God is concerned for me. If God is concerned for lowly shepherds, then most definitely God is concerned for me. And I need to know that today, as we all do, I think, with all that we are going through, to know that I, me, we, you, are loved. To know that God was known and experienced on that hillside with that group of ordinary shepherds, that fills me with hope. The other thing that fills me with hope is the conviction that this baby Jesus was, in fact, more than a baby. Well, yes, of course, a baby, certainly, and very important for that. But also, these words that Luke uses to describe this baby, Saviour, Messiah and Lord. This was the Saviour full of promise, better than any old human emperor like Augustus. And not only a saviour, but the Messiah too, the Messiah, the fulfilment of all the hopes of Israel for an anointed figure. And not only the Messiah, but the Lord as well. And so you cannot run away from the fact that in this baby were all the hopes of the world and all the associations with the divine. Not bad for a baby. God's rule would come about. God's mission would be accomplished, not in might or in force or pressure, certainly not in violence, but in humility and meekness and submission. That is God's way. And if that's God's way, then that's certainly good enough for me. It is as if God is saying to us, to you, to me, there is a better way. It may not make you rich, or powerful, or successful. But it will certainly change the world. It did 2,000 years ago, and it will do today. Because it is the way of quiet humility, of gentle love, of modest actions, of unassuming behaviour. It is the way of thoughtfulness and quietness, not the way of big or grand gestures, certainly. And we know that all those big grand gestures can have an immediate impact. But we also know, from all that we have gone through this past year, and from all that people have done for us, that a simple act of kindness, a basic word of encouragement, a word, a gesture, a smile, can make a huge difference. And that's good. Because that is the way of a shepherd. It's not the way of a king, it's the way of a shepherd. Glory to God in the highest heaven, we read, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. Well, we are all favoured. We are all loved by God. So may God fill you with all peace and love and even joy as we turn to a new year filled with hope. Thanks be to God. Amen.
It is good to welcome Nev to our worship today to lead our prayers of intercession. We're so grateful to Nev for all that he does in his role as hospital chaplain. It's such an important time as well. As we ourselves pray for Nev and for the work that he does, so we pray for all those who work in the caring professions. And we invite Nev now to lead some prayers. So as I invite us to share in our prayers of intercession, this Christmas our prayers feel very different to they have in past years, as Christmas is very different in how we share it uh, in fellowship with Christ Jesus and with our families and church communities. So let us pray together. We pray thinking of Mary and Joseph, the disruption to their lives as they had to travel to Bethlehem, the uncertainty, the unknown. We know this Christmas many families and people have uncertainty and unknowing. This winter probably feels that bit darker and colder, more frightening and more challenging. So we're all together in a journey which we don't know how and when it will end. We have hope, we have indications of an ending through a vaccine. So we pray for all our scientists who continue to work to find new treatments, to find additional vaccines and understand the COVID virus better. So in the future less people will die and people recover better and recover more fully. So we pray for all scientists at this time. We pray for the workers of the NHS particularly, but all key workers. So many this last year who have given so much. Remember the families of key workers and NHS workers who have died this year, for whom there will be an empty place this Christmas, a real keen sense of loss. We pray for all the bereaved this season. All those who look back over the year having lost a loved one. And those this Christmas know they journey with somebody, a friend, a family member, whose life journey on this earth is coming to an end. We pray, Lord, you'll be a light to their path at this time. And that you will send your angels to minister to them, as you did to Mary and to the shepherds. We pray for all those this time who can't be with family, for whom loneliness is that much deeper. We think of all the journeys that are planned and have been lost. We pray for the different gatherings that will be happening, gatherings that are unexpected, gatherings that are more restricted. We think of Mary and Joseph's end of the journey find themselves in the stable, probably the last place they expected. Many people find themselves in situations and arrangements they never expected this year. But Lord, in all these things we pray you will be the centre of all that is happening, all that is said and all that is done. And even though things may feel very different, we remember that the story of the Christ child has not changed. The hope of what the Christ child brings does not change. The journey from Christmas to Easter does not change. The journey to the cross and to the empty tomb and the resurrection does not change. When everything else does, Christ is the same. The promise is the same. And may we live faithfully to those promises. There will be times of doubt, there will be times of fear, the times of uncertainty, but Christ will always be with us, each and every one of us. So we pray for one another. We pray for those who are ill. I think especially of Chris and Pat Brown this time. There will be many others we all know at this time who we can't be with and love to be with to help in their suffering, but we hold them in our prayers as we're all held together in Christ. 
May we not give up praying for one another, of seeing the different ways in which we can serve our neighbours, and therefore bring the light and the hope of Christ to others this Christmas and in the year to come. May we journey into 2021 with the hope that the wise men had as they followed that star. May we follow Christ and his light and may be a footpath to our path, now light to our footpath, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. We've waited all year, haven't we? But now we can sing. We can sing with gusto. We can sing without any sense of guilt. But in total confidence, the final verse of O come all ye faithful. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning. Let that be our prayer and our song this Christmas and going into 20. 21. O oh, come, all ye faithful.
Let us pray. God, send us out now, knowing that in small moments, today and every day, we can see you and honour you. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and for evermore. Amen.